Hello, welcome to this presentation on the control of homeostasis. At the end of this presentation, you should be able to define homeostasis and explain its relationship to the interstitial fluid, describe the components of a feedback system, Contrast the operation of negative and positive feedback systems with examples and lastly explain why homeostatic imbalances cause disorders. Introduction Father of modern physiology is the French physiologist whose name is Claude Bernard who lived in the 18th century. Bernard observed that the internal environment remains remarkably constant despite the changing conditions in the external environment. In 1932, the American physiologist Walter Cannon coined the term homeostasis to describe this stable internal environment. Conditions within the body must remain within a narrow range, which is called as the physiological range. Homeo means same. Stasis means stable. In other words, homeostasis involves keeping the internal environment within set ranges. Let us look at the definition of homeostasis. Thus, homeostasis is the regulation and maintenance of the internal environment at a constant within physiological limits. Next, next let us look at the homeostasis and body fluids. The body fluids can be divided into different compartments. The total body water volume is around 40 liters, uh, which constitutes about 60% uh, of the body weight. This is made up of the intracellular fluid volume and the extracellular fluid volume. The intracellular fluid, fluid volume uh, takes up about 40% of the body weight, which is about 25 liters, while the extracellular fluid volume is around 15 liters, which is going to be 20% of the body weight, which is further divided into the plasma volume, which is around 3 liters, that is 20% 20 20 of the ECF, and the interstitial fluid which is around 12 liters, that is 80% of the ECF. The extracellular fluid is called by different names in different locations. ECF or the extracellular fluid in the blood vessels is called as plasma, while the same fluid within the lymphatic vessels is called as lymph. And in, the, uh, in and around the spinal cord, it is called as the cerebrospinal fluid, while in the joints, it is referred to as the synovial fluid. In the eyes, it is also called as the aqueous humor and vitreous body. Let us look at the balancing of the internal and external environment. Now here at the bottom of the picture you can see that you have the ICF that is the intracellular fluid, then you have the interstitial fluid, the plasma, the organs and all this will be the internal environment that is within the organism and this organism is linked to the external environment. Let's take a look at this. Cells exchange 
nutrients and waste with their surroundings. The intracellular fluid is controlled by the interstitial fluid which is then controlled by the plasma which is conditioned by the organ systems it passes through and this has got a direct link to the external environment. So whatever changes take place in the external environment, the internal body composition and control system has to take care of the homeostasis. Let's look at some of the normal physiological ranges. In the fasting blood, the arterial pH is around 7.35 to 7.45, uh, which is around 36 to 44 nanomoles per liter, while the bicarbonate is around 24 to 28 milliequivalents per liter, while the total serum protein is around 60 to 80 grams per liter, and the glucose is around 3.8 to 6.0 millimoles per liter, which is around 70 to 120, 110 milligrams per deciliter. Next, let us look at the control of homeostasis. Let's look at the basic components of a feedback system. First of all, in order to detect the changes in the inside the body or outside, you require a receptor which detects the changes in the body. And these changes are called as the stimuli. Then this information needs to be sent to the control center which will determine the set point or for a normal range. Then this information has to be sent back for the necessary corrections to the effector organ. Causes the response determined by the control center. Let's look at the feedback system. The external world, whatever changes take place, we, this will be like a stimulus and this input of the stimulus will be detected by the receptor which is the sensor in the body. And this information is carried along the afferent nerves to the controller which will be able to set the uh, set point. From the here the controller through the efference sends the effect to the effector organ and the response will be modified and this response will be opposite to that of what it started off with and this it is opposing the stimulus effect and thereby this is called as the control feedback system. Control systems help maintenance of homeostasis. We have the sensors which gather the data, that is its senses. Then we have the control center which receives the data, interprets the information and sends out the messages. That is the brain. And then you have the communication system which delivers messages to the target organs and the tissues. This is through the peripheral nervous system, example the motor neurons. And then this information needs to be communicated to the targets which will respond to the change. These are the muscles and glands which release the hormones. Negative feedback. What is it? This is a regulatory mechanism in which a change in a controlled variable triggers a response that opposes the change. This is the key word. That is, it triggers a response that opposes the change. Let us, let us look at the negative feedback loop. We have 
the stimulus uh, which is the deviation from the set point and then this is going to be sensed or stimulates the sensor that is the receptors and this information is carried via the afferent nerves and it stimulates the control center which is the one which controls the set point and the information from there is sent along the efferent pathways to the effector organ and then the response will be there which will be the stimulating response which is counteracting the deviation from the set point and thereby the negative feedback mechanism works. Now let us take an example for example blood pressure. Let's look at this in a little more detail. Baroreceptors in the walls of the blood vessels will detect an increase in the blood pressure. Right? And this brain information is carried to the brain. That is, in other words, the brain receives the input from uh, and the signals from the blood vessels and the heart. And then the brain integrates this information and sends out the information via the efferent nerves to the blood vessels which will dilate and to the heart which will decrease the heart rate. So what is the effect of all this is it decreases the blood pressure. There are a little more pictorial way of description blood pressure. To recap, increase in the blood pressure stimulates the receptors in the aortic arch and the carotid sinus and this information is carried via the ninth and the tenth cranial nerves which will go to the brain in the area in the medulla oblongata called as the vasomotor center which will inhibit be inhibited cardio inhibitory center which will be stimulated and the cardio accelerator center which will be also inhibited so what is the result of all this is sympathetic nerve activity is going to be suppressed while the parasympathetic activity is going to be stimulated so what is the effect of all this you will have peripheral vasodilation and a decrease in the heart rate which leads to a decrease in cardiac output and this will lead to the blood pressure decrease. And this is what is called as the feedback and this information is going back to the receptors and therefore the receptors are not going to be stimulated furthermore. Let us look at another example, mechanism of homeostasis thermoregulation. The process of maintaining uh, the body temperature steady under a variety of conditions, this is called as thermoregulation. The systems that were involved are many. For example, the muscular system, the integumentary system or the integument that is the skin, respiratory system, cardiovascular system or the circulatory system, nervous system, particularly the hypothalamus in the brain where the centers are located. Then you have the endocrine system which are the hormones and the feedback system works. Now let's try to compare the hot versus the cold. So when the temperature goes up, when there is too much of heat, you find vasodilation. Arterioles dilate. More blood flows into the skin capillaries and the heat is lost. Along with that, we also have sweating. Sweat glands secrete more which removes the heat. That is by a process called as evaporation. Along with that, we also have the piloerection where the, the hairs flatten over the skin and also you have stretching out that is you stretch out your body to increase your body surface area in order to get rid of the heat. Let's now look at the opposite effect that is when you are exposed to cold. 
you have vasoconstriction, which is the opposite of vasodilation, and the arterioles constrict and reduce the blood flow to the skin. So therefore, the core of the body is kept warm. Then we also have shivering, that is contraction and relaxation of the muscles, which produces the heat. Piloerection, here now the hairs on the skin will stand up, that is what is called as the goosebumps. Then you have so curl up, which we, we obtain, uh, attain the fetal position, which is helping to reduce the body surface area, thereby the exposure of the body or maintenance of the heat within the body is going to be taken care of. Next, let us look at the positive feedback system. This is a regulatory mechanism in which the stimulus, uh, the response to a stimulus in a control system causes the controlled variable to move further away from the set point. A typical example is parturition. Here in, at full term the baby will uh, position itself in such a way that the head comes towards the cervix. The baby pushes against the cervix. This causes the stretching and this stretching of the cervix causes the nerve impulses to be sent back to the brain and the brain stimulates the posterior pituitary to release the hormone called as oxytocin which will cause the smooth muscles of the lining of the uterus to contract to the extent that it goes on getting reinforced till the baby comes out. Once the baby is out then the stretch is going to be reduced. So what actually happens during the positive feedback during childbirth? Stretch receptors in the walls of the uterus send the signals uh, to the brain. The brain induces a release of the hormone oxytocin into the bloodstream. Uterine muscles will contract uh, more forcefully, more stretch, more hormone, more contraction. That is why it's called as positive feedback. Cycle ends with the birth of the baby and decrease in the stretch. That's exactly what happens. Positive feedback mechanism, what are the other examples? We have quite a few of them. Blood clotting, micturition, which is voiding of urine, defecation, Sodium ion inflow in the genesis of nerve signals, that is action potentials. Milk ejection reflex. Now, having seen what is homeostasis, let us look at it. If there is a disruption of homeostasis, how can it be harmful? Homeostasis can be disrupted for several reasons. Now, what are these reasons? These reasons could be the sensors fail, they don't detect the changes. Then you can also have a situation where the targets do not receive the messages and the nerve issues will be there. Injury that is overwhelming the homeostatic controls, illness, viruses and bacteria and therefore disruption of homeostasis can begin in one organ and cause a chain reaction in the others, thereby causing a major body disturbance. So as long as homeostasis is taken care of, it is fine, that is successful compensation will be there. Homeostasis will be re-established and therefore that is the normal situation. But if there is a failure to compensate, then it leads to the pathophysiology. It could lead to illness and illness could lead to death. So this is how it works. Organism is in homeostasis, that is a balance. 
you have an external change and you also have an internal change. As long as these internal change results in the disturbance of the homeostasis and the organism is capable of taking care of this, that is it tries to compensate for the change, it is fine. When the compensation fails, it leads to illness and disease, whereas when it need, leads to or it succeeds, then it leads to wellness. So let us summarize towards the end. In summary, therefore, homeostasis is a dynamic equilibrium of the internal environment. All body systems contribute towards the homeostasis. Nervous and endocrine systems are the most important. Homeostasis is important for normal health. Control systems of the body contain three main elements, receptors, control centers and the effectors. Negative feedback mechanisms reduce the original stimulus and are essential for maintaining homeostasis. Example, bo body temperature regulation, heart rate regulation, blood pressure regulation, blood vessels, uh, blood levels of glucose. These are some of the examples. Positive feedback mechanisms intensify the initial stimulus leading to enhancement of the response. Examples are blood clotting and labor contractions or parturition. Now, if there is going to be a homeostatic imbalance, then you will see that with age, the efficiency of the negative feedback mechanisms decline and those of the positive feedback mechanisms occur more frequently. So that is the end of the presentation on uh, control of homeostasis. And these can lead to certain changes. Let us end by asking a thinking type of question. When we become dehydrated, we usually feel thirsty which causes us to drink fluids. You need to decide whether the thirst sensation is a part of a negative or a positive feedback control system and defend your choice. For more information, please visit this textbook as well as some of these videos. We welcome your feedback. Thank you and hope it was useful. Don't watch the clock. Do what it does. Keep going. Thank you very much.